Hey everyone, none of us work for Discord or anything, but Discord brought us together to chat a little bit about everything and anything. And who better to talk about everything and anything than people who do just about everything. Why don't we start by going around and having everyone introduce yourselves, tell us who you are, what you do, and some interesting things you've worked on. Let's start with you, Daniel. Uh, hi everybody, I'm Daniel Chong. I started off as a story artist in uh, working on different animated movies. I wanted to make my own thing, so I created a show called We Bear Bears. It was on the air for about four seasons, and then we just made a movie that came out last year. And now I'm uh, developing a new project right now. That's what I do. My name's Natasha Allegri, and I created a show called Be and Puppy Cat. I currently am an assistant to the art director at OpenBSD, and yeah, I do stuff, fun secret stuff on the internet, I guess. Posting mm -hmm. weird memes, I don't know. <laughs> 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 Secretly. <laughs> Secretly. Hi, I'm Domi Shi. Uh, Ten years ago, I worked on Inside Out. The Good Dinosaur, Toy Story 4, Incredibles 2. I guess I'm best known for directing uh, the short film Bow, uh, which came out about a couple years ago about uh, an old lady and her dumpling that comes to life and they go through a roller coaster of emotions. And and that's that's it. And currently I'm directing a feature film. So at this point, I'd like for you guys to draw each other's characters. Let's work in a clockwise motion. So Daniel, you draw yes. Domi. Domi, draw Natasha's, and Natasha, draw Daniel's. We're drawing characters, not people. Yeah, we're like, I'm not drawing Domi. Yes, characters. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, if you want to draw Domi, that's totally fine. I mean, what is the line? No. We could do some really, we could do some really ugly caricatures. Oh, yeah. Don't unleash Domi. She will destroy <laughs> all of us. <laughs> I've been on the end of that. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, is it okay if I cheat a little bit and Google it? Yeah, <laughs> that's what I, I was going to do. That's what I was going to do, too. I'm drawing yeah. how We Bear Bears makes me feel and not <laughs> exactly how it looks, oh, maybe. That's good. Domi, did you go through a lot of different designs for the bow, or did you just, like, nail it? or just do the first design that you had in your, like oh, that came naturally? Uh, I had like different, uh, like I I was settling on like the style of the dumpling. Like, oh, you see. know how there's different dumplings? Like I, I drew a little shumai, I drew a little Ooh. pot sticker, and I was like playing with the shapes, but then I just ended up with the, with that classic bow shape with that, with the little nipple at the top. <laughs> Because it just, it just looked so cute. It looked like hair. It looked the, the most like oh, hair. Oh, that's true. That's true. So, so I was I like, like that. yeah. Did you ever play around with giving him actual like hands and like feet? Oh, like, did hands? He ever go, did he ever go through any evolution at all? Oh. Uh, not, that I, not that I think that that would be a better thing at all. But... His design was pretty much... Uh the same from the beginning it was just it was a story that kind of went through the most iterations when i started boarding it i thought it was going to be like a just a short that i would do on my own so the content was a little bit raunchier oh my <laughs> like god like i like i like when so in the story uh you know it's about this uh old lady uh, uh -huh. when her dumplings come to life he right. starts to grow up starts to like separate from her a bit do his own thing and then uh in the story i had her like vacuuming his room one day and then she like looks under the bed and there's like <laughs> there's what? like a bong there's like beer bottles and there's like food porn magazine like <laughs> steamy buns and like like it was like, like a dim sum menu sizzling. or something like that yeah it was it was like 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 you know like uh those like good housekeeping but it's like oh like, my god recipes and stuff which is oh, it's amazing. like implied like food porn, right, um, right. and then I, I could, and then I had to like take all that out. Um, Natasha, is there a raunchier version of being puppy cat somewhere? <gasps> no, I was, <laughs> I was pure from the beginning. Oh. <laughs> <gasps> this wholesome content from the start. You heathens! Oh no, <laughs> it's true. Um, I love the voice of puppy cat, Natasha. It's a yeah. Vocaloid, right? Is it is is it a Vocaloid? Yeah, it is. It's a Vocaloid named Oliver. 
Which one is he? Is he the blonde one or the? Yeah, like, like... he's the. Oh, sorry, he's the blonde one with like the canary, and I think part of his face is a little messed up. He has like a little hat. That's so cool. Like, like, how did you come up with the idea for using a vocaloid for him? It's it's such a unique and super cute and iconic voice. Yeah, uh, I was into vocaloid like music for a little bit. And I wanted to try to use the technology, I guess, because it seemed really fun. It, it seemed a little bit like there was a community at the time to try to learn how to use it. Uh, mm -hmm. But we just chop it up and make it pretty uh, random. It's, mm. it's nice. Anyone can have Puppy Cat. You just download oh. the Vocaloid uh, program and then the Vocaloid one. So cute. Is the voice actually saying words or like how, cause it's kind of just gibberish, like when we hear it, but like how, what are the words being actually recorded by the, for the cat? Yeah, you have to actually write like kind of sounds, like you can write po or like ka and stuff like that. And it'll make gibberish. Um, it'll try to guess the words too. Uh, uh, but yeah. like you can kind of write sounds and then put in little words in there if you want to. I see. Sometimes puppy cat says ass. Sometimes puppy cat says ass. <laughs> That's not so wholesome, Natasha. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> secretly. That's not the color. This is Oops. the best. I love watching this. <laughs> I love that your panda looks like he has hair. <laughs> I forgot what a panda looks like. <laughs> I love it. it looks, yeah, it looks like a little... It's his bald spot. Mm. That's so cute. And sleepy grizz. Mm -hmm. I love the colors on Bee and Puppy Cat. It's so pastel-y and... Yeah. Soothing. It's like Barry K or something, right? Is that, is that the term for it? That like I've heard of it. Japanese, like... Lolita, but goth Lolita kind of aesthetic. My uh, art directors come up with the colors. Uh, Hans oh, cool. Sang and Efren Farias. They're pretty awesome. They're kind of my art directors, and they also now help me board and they help me write. Like, they're. I think the show is like our thing now. It's three people, mm. not just one person. Yeah, cool. it's interesting how that kind of happens. Like, I think on Bears, I would say the same thing too. Like, I think as you keep going you don't feel like it's your show anymore like you kind of have you take in all these voices and suddenly everyone else is taking ownership of it and you kind of but I guess that's also the way I feel like I don't know if you feel this way but you kind of survive is you have you kind of let people take a little bit more ownership of it so you can like sit back a little bit and not kill yourself like every yeah, season I, <laughs> I learned that lesson where there's people that do things better than you and you have oh, to yeah. let them do it and when you do it's like it's so freeing and it feels so good it's like oh, i could yeah. never make it look like that i'm so glad i wasn't up your ass the whole yeah. like week <laughs> yeah totally yeah so awesome. i was gonna ask you Domi, do you feel like there's a lot of uh challenge in censoring like what you can and can't do in your work working at a big studio Oh, uh, do, you feel, do you feel like it's tough skirting around like kind of like your instincts to be like edgier and, and like a little oh yeah creepier? a little bit I mean when it comes to language yes because I naturally mm. swear a lot <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, actually it kind of forces you to be more creative too because you have to find mm. your, your own kind of quirky swear words and just make that up did you find yourself trying to sneak things in on a We Bear Bears, Daniel? Uh, uh, we were, <laughs> we we definitely got tagged a lot, but I think every time we <laughs> we got uh we we got told not to do something, we always overcompensated and like completely G-rated it. I don't know. We were too nervous. I, I you know what I think it is? It's like on a TV schedule. It's like you don't want to put yourself in a situation where you have to have back and forth constantly with notes. So if you try to like be clever and like sneak something by and they catch it, it's just going to be a more of a time suck to try to like fix it again. So I think we like we relented every time like they would fight us. We'd be like, OK, we'll just like, you know, get rid of that thing, you know, because it was just too much work. And like you have no energy to fight with 
S and P or like legal mm -hmm. on somebody. We did this uh, episode once where it was took place in a video store. Like so it was like a baby bears episode. So it was like a throwback. And we like wanted to line the whole store with like movie parody posters, you know? So it was like, a, it looked like the Titanic poster, you know, with the one with the two heads and then the ship coming through it. But then like, you know, we called it something different. It didn't look like the actors, but like that was like not good enough. So we kept like tweaking it just a little bit and a little bit. We went through at least seven rounds of notes and like the poor character designer was like, kept redrawing it. And then we kept coming up with different, it was just such a time suck and it was like not worth it because it was just like a background gag. And it was, I think after that we were just like, you know what? And we just ended up just obscuring it with shapes. It was so dumb. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's just like those kind of fights are just not where I want to put my time. So we just give up. Yeah, you just got to choose your battles sometimes, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't think that's the one I want to fight. Yep. Oh, look at this sexy lounging bear. Who's Dang. that? Is Dang. that the bear's fourth brother? <laughs> it's, it's lounge he's... bear. What does he sexy have around bear. his neck? What is that? It's the, it's the, the heart of the ocean. <laughs> oh, 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 this is Dravi, like one of your, <laughs> your French girls. <laughs> yeah. I like how he's floating. It's, yeah. Sexy bear. Oh my God. Love it. Is that a bow, bow bear? It was an attempt at a bow bear. Now I'm going to do it. <laughs> It's a bow bear with, with some Daniel lips. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is a Daniel bear. <laughs> These, this is how Dr Domi draws eyes. It's like, it's always like that. <laughs> I don't know, where does, this, where does this drawing language come from, Domi? Where oh, eyes look maybe, like that. Or eyes look like that. I might have seen yeah. it in anime or something? I don't know. It's just to represent my, I have hooded eyes, so I always kind of... <laughs> <laughs> they're like puckered yeah. lip, puckered yeah, lip yeah, eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think like in anime, sometimes they'll like draw eyes like puckered lips. And it's just like a character going like, what? Well, no. It's like, sometimes it's like you're expecting the eyes to talk, like to have little lips or mouths. Yep. Three mouths. Mm -hmm. Rumiko draws these a lot. Like Rumiko Kapusai. Yeah, oh. like Hapasai from Ranma sometimes will have them. Oh. <laughs> That's so cute. Yeah, I feel like I see it sometimes as like a reaction, like a, ooh, like mm. what? Like, like oh, a, like you're like a half lit or something like that? Like, uh. like if someone's being really like dumb or something, you're like, what? <laughs> oh, what? I see. No. I see. Or like if a character with, if a character normally has glasses, they like take it off and then it's like. <laughs> <laughs> Their eyes are just all like puckered and like. Ugh. That's the best gag. I love yeah. like real eye reveal. Mm. Mm -hmm. There was this anime shortcut that a lot of the board artists were using, and I didn't catch it until like we started having to ship things, and it, things would come back looking really weird. But people were drawing tears as just little balls on the bottom of their eyes, so it'd be like, um, like if their eyes we're here like they would just draw like these little oh yeah here little and I, beads. I yeah yeah and i mean i think for the style of bears it just like isn't right but like uh -huh. everyone was doing it i think cause, probably because they grew up watching anime yeah, yeah yeah totally so fun. how do you how do you want the bears to cry <laughs> Uh, hmm. a streak yeah <laughs> a, a i think this streak. i think this works for our language like something right below it uh, i guess it's more... like less caricatured I'm, i i think maybe my tastes are a little boring or too standard but you know. no this is more real like this is like not aesthetic <laughs> crying this is like yeah. oh no he's really <laughs> crying oh yeah i want to see the re i want to see the tragedy in their eyes I, want to see I think something. Daniel just hates anime is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel's was... head turns like. <laughs> yeah, I, I will say it was a big, not that I hate it, but it was like a big cultural divide within our crew because, you know, most of the young people on our crew grew up with it. And I have very little connection to both it and the language of drawing that way. So like seeing how, but then seeing how like, 
we could overlap and the things that I did like that they brought in that were very anime and finding like some nice in between was really interesting. And I think it, it definitely textured the show in an interesting way that I couldn't have done myself. So it definitely, yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. I think anime definitely did play a positive role in our show. That's cool. Yeah, I like how you guys uh, take inspiration from anime, but then like combine it with your own kind of style. Yeah, but... like putting your own kind of swing yeah, put on your it. own yeah. spin on it, yeah, which spin. I think you yeah. and Natasha did really well, which is really cool. I guess because I'm just like scared to even be compared to like better stuff out there that I'm just like, I'm not, not I'm I'm gonna even I'm not even gonna try to like dip my toe in like oh. like trying <laughs> trying to, to be like too like I don't know like Miyazaki or whatever because I'm like there's no way I could even compete with that yeah so right, it's, it's right, like you right. have to like create your own kind of lane instead of being like yeah I'm just gonna try to be exactly like him <laughs> yeah. So. Have any um, studios or movies been like a really good anime sort of stylization in CG? Like, has anyone pulled it off really well yet? I don't know about anime, but Spider-Verse is like mm. the most exciting thing that's come out of CG in like forever. It's, and like, it's like really, really pushed. My favorite really, like, thing ever. Stylized. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, they animate on like a combo of ones and twos, uh, which for people who don't know what that is, it's like, it's like CG animation is on one, so it's like super fluid, but then twos yeah. is what uh, uh, 2D animation is on. So it's got like a little bit of a crunchier, but like like a little bit yeah. more of a, of a imperfect, but really appealing kind of timing and quality to it. Um, yeah. And Spider-Verse yeah. does that so, yeah. so well. I thought Spider-Verse yeah. did it on... Well, I think probably they were probably on threes at some point too, right? They must have been. They're on ones and twos, and I think they were like all over the place because a couple of the people that work on worked on it uh, went over to Pixar, and then I like chatted with them. I was like, how'd you guys do it? What'd you guys do? Like, what? And they were just kind of <laughs> like, you know, like making stuff up, and they had a very fluid kind of way of discovering the style. And then yeah. it's crazy too, because like their camera moves were really crazy that they had, like they had to, like the, the camera moves were on ones. Yeah. And then the characters moving were on two. It's crazy. <laughs> I don't yeah, know how they yeah. did Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I love these six please bow expressions. <laughs> That's like, a, like, I love that, like, yeah, that graphic, like big sweat drops and those like big, um, like vein throughout. So it's like very like 90s, <laughs> like late 80s, mid to late 90s kind of like style. Cause I feel like anime nowadays, they don't really do the no huge vein? like red veins or like the big mm. sweat drops or like the super deformed chibi, like, yeah, like, like that stuff. Mm. Yeah, I don't I really do that anymore. Chibi. Yeah. I know. I miss the chibi too. Yeah, Chibi. it's a real fun way to like express emotion simply. Yeah, it's more uh, definitely less. Well, it's still pretty pushed, but it's like different. It's less like cutesy and cartoony, I guess. Okay, so next, let's mm. uh, have everyone draw their current obsession. It could be anything: it could be a movie, TV show, current hobby, food you enjoy eating. Uh, just anything you're super into right now. <laughs> oh my gosh. Huh. <laughs> I I have a current obsession, but I'm embarrassed to draw it. <laughs> draw it. That, that means you have to oh, no. do it. Oh, okay. Well, I'm just going to start drawing it and you guys can, can, can see, can, <laughs> you can guess what it is. <laughs> I don't think I'm doing anything. You don't have a current obsession, Natasha? No. Well, I guess kind of. Oh, is this uh, the beautiful cats you're living with right now? Yes. They're so cute. <laughs> yeah, they're very cute. This one just has such a good face. Oh, I love that face. Yeah, she's so graphic. I've done so many drawings of her. 
so cute. Awesome. There's that, like, is it a parasite that you can get from cat poop that makes you just, like, really love cats? Mm, Whoa, I have that. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> that too. But, like, I think I have that poop disease that makes me <laughs> really like cats. <laughs> You're really into happy feet, Daniel. <laughs> nice. No, I've I, well, yes, I uh, I I kind of became in love with uh, these penguins called the Delhi penguins. Uh, they just look, they look like cartoons to begin with. Like I'm not even caricaturing it that much. And uh, but there are Delhi penguins in Happy Feet. I've is never that, seen it. Is, is, is Elijah seen Wood? The is, wait, is, is Dude, Elijah Wood in that? It is a star-studded cast. Uh, let me <laughs> it's tell Elijah you. Wood. <laughs> Elijah Wood. It's is... not Morgan Freeman. No, no, no. No Morgan. Uh, Hugh Jackman is in it. Um, he plays the, uh, he un unaccept the, the un disapproving father. So Mumbles the... the the penguin let me let me tell you about this movie so yes mumbles the penguin is not accepted in his community because he can't sing Sings. but he oh. can dance <laughs> but he can dance he can that's dance why, that's why he's got happy feet <laughs> oh i like how but, this yeah oh, sorry <laughs> no 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 <laughs> so so because he, he's not approved his father you know kind of you know uh kind of uh, disowns him slightly and then he goes to another, he goes to an Adeli uh, penguin colony and they're very accepting, but they're all played like, it's borderline kind of racist the way they portray it, but it's, they're basically oh. like, a, like a Hispanic group of Adeli penguins and they like love everything. And they're like dancing all the time and very accepting. And, um, but, oh. and so I think they were trying to like show some divide between like, you know, maybe a stringent Midwestern family versus like, you know, maybe a more accepting culture, this Hispanic culture who was more open, I suppose. So that was kind of, I think, the reason they gave Hugh Jackman a Midwestern voice. I see. Anyways, um, maybe that's the extent I should talk about Happy Feet during this. <laughs> I just remember <laughs> there was like a really like strong uh, message or like a surprising message at the end, right? Like there's a yeah, yeah, it got hell yeah, dark. It gets to like, zoo. Yeah, it gets really dark and then. Yeah, he's like banging his head in this. It's really like, yeah, it's really sad. <laughs> There's a Domi, what? Domi, what are you drawing right now? What is I'm this? I'm drawing. This is Phantom of the Opera, you guys. I'm really uh, obsessed with Phantom uh, of the Opera. <laughs> uh, I'm like so obsessed sing. with it. Sing for me. <laughs> I know. I discovered yeah. it during quarantine. I watched a movie with Red Butler during quarantine, and it was amazing. Oh. <laughs> and then and then i just been listening to the soundtrack and like like si singing it to my cat <laughs> like a <excuse> <laughs> it's okay. such a dramatic thing to be hearing every day like these it's so good that organ, it's that organ. <laughs> yeah i love that organ it's very like castlevania -y. it's so good mm -hmm. I'm just like, and i'm like wow andrew lloyd Webber. like before i just knew about cats and i was like yeah, what, what is he? But then after Phantom, I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> this, man's a, this man's a genius. <laughs> so cool. Let's move on to something else. Um, yes, please. Let's draw oh, some Wumpus. Wumpus doesn't really have a backstory. So let's kind of come up with some ideas of where Wumpus comes from and or maybe what type of adventure Wumpus would go on. I love a pitiful Tragic. character. Tragic. Yeah. 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 Wumpus. It makes Wumpus like attractive. He's a lone wolf. I like that. What um, makes him an outcast? Is like what is there is there something weird about him that makes him an outcast? What is he done what what is wrong with him? He's a blue pig. Okay. So it's it's in a world with normal pigs. Wampus was born the runt. Isn't this like a this is the setup for uh Charlotte It's like Happy Feet. No, it's Happy Feet. Oh yeah. Happy Feet. Well, in it's Happy, happy feet, feet, the reason he's different is cuz the egg dropped. That's sad. That's why his feet are so happy is because he was dropped. Oh, he was dropped. <laughs> oh my god. 
<laughs> you can't just like have a natural you can't have a no. natural love for something it has to be something like yeah wrong with <laughs> i see he's his love for Man. dance was birthed from trauma that's so right? intense i know it is really intense yeah that movie had like weirdly dark uh swings <laughs> One piss. Oh, his nose is like. His nose looks like. His nose kind of looks like uh, the Phantom Mask. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you guys think it looks like the Phantom Mask? And that he, oh and that he could look. Doesn't he kind of look like he could be. It could be like an eye phantom. patch, maybe. <laughs> a phantom. Just. Yeah. Give him a giant cloak and put him playing the organ. Yeah. I really don't like my wampus. I can do better. I liked his big nose. Nah, I had the proportions wrong, I think. I want to give my wampus human ears. Oh, wow. And maybe a human <laughs> nose. Wampus. I think the nose is too much. It makes it look like a monkey. Just human ears is funny. I love this Phantom of the Opera Wampus. Phantom of the Wampus. It looks like a mask. <laughs> or maybe I'm just too obsessed, you guys. <laughs> it looks like his head is like super small. Like this is like a small little That's head, head, little face. Yeah. yeah. Face. It, it could be like an eye patch. Oh wait, that's not how eye patches work. <laughs> that's my cat. And he's here, okay. Oh! Yay. Wait, see how big. Oh. You want to see him? Come here. Yeah, is he big? Is he big? Yeah. He's like the whole oh, wow. Oh my god, he is a. He's heavy. He's it. heavy. Love yeah. it. Cute. I like the idea of a tragic backstory. You can do those tears that Daniel likes. Where they oh, show yeah. The curve. Oh, like, yeah. He's so oh. sad. Realist. Uh, realistic. Uh, there's also, tears. isn't there this one too where it just goes down the face like that? Yeah. That's an yeah, anime. Yeah. That's anime, right? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Help. Me. I love, I love that his backstory is just sadness. Yeah. <laughs> if he's gonna have a sad, you know, story, he, he's gotta have like disapproving parents. <laughs> yeah, have, like, like his parents are like they're nor are they normal pigs and then they're like Why they're like midwestern you... pigs so like yeah like, like, like Hugh Jackson like, it's, it's why Hugh can't Jackson. you be normal Wampus yeah. stop embarrassing us yeah and then Wampus <laughs> has to go on a um a journey of discovery to but then but then Wampus will return and we'll find out that what made him different is actually his strength. Yeah. Okay. I think we wrote the story. It's, it's there. Yeah. It's there. Now, now we just have to come up with the gags. Oh, the gags. Oh, he's got to have like friends along the way. Yeah. Uh, he has to meet other outsiders who have been shunned for different reasons and then they can find community through them. So it's like, a penguin with a, a human nose. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they all have the same nose. Oh, they all have their noses. <laughs> have... Right. So, guys, I have some fan questions that um, were gathered from from the Discord server Cartoon Universe. Mm. The first one is to Natasha. You see, I'm an artist struggling to find my own path in the creative world. And I know I'm supposed to find out for myself what I'm capable of, but sometimes I don't feel confident. When I looked into your artwork, especially from the Adventure Time comic book you published and the series you directed, Being Puppy Cat, I fell in love with your whimsical yet soft art style with a sense of otherworldliness and eeriness. I thought to myself, how isn't she afraid to reveal herself in her work? And what can I do to have that level of courage? Wow, that was a nice question. Really nice yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Just do it. Just uh, no shame, no embarrassment. 
just go online and and shit post and draw whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only way. Oh. Is that how so you like harden your skin over the years? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> shit, shit posting. Shit right, posts. Right. Yeah. So like in high school, I was just posting these journal comics and not even thinking about how people would take them because I knew like I liked to read journal comics that girls mm -hmm. drew online and I did not care what anyone thought. I did not know what oversharing was. I did not really mind because i just knew like this is the content i like and if i can make something kind of like that i'm sure someone out there will like it too be aware that like not all critique is equal like you don't have to let people like talk to you about your stuff unless you want to listen to them uh true? yeah just I keep saying it, but just just do it. Just shit post. Just go all out. Go ham. <laughs> cool. Let's clear the canvas, and we can start doing some other drawings while I go th while we uh, respond to these questions. Okay. I love Daddy Wampus. <laughs> He's so, so disapproving. I know. Okay. <laughs> Why don't you be more like your older Wampus brother? <laughs> love it. <laughs> okay. The next question is for Daniel. Uh, why did you start the original We Bear Bears comic strip and the three bears? Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Actually, this is like a very origin origin story. I don't even talk about this in interviews because it's so minute. But I guess since the question is kind of directed toward, it's not spicy. But like, uh, I had a friend who basically had a website. It was called like Dumb Comics. Um, and he had me just be like a guest comic strip person. So I just did it for that and then uh posted and i think it got like decent reaction uh i'm not 100 percent sure but i think after that then i basically wanted to keep making comics about it and i think part of it was it was a reaction to working in animation for so long at the time and i think working in feature animation it's very stringent because you're basically working from a script and it's all kind of very defined like what you need to do and in a way it can be very constricting. So I think I was just getting very tired of the rules that I was being presented all the time at work. So making the comic was really about um, not having rules, not knowing where the story was going and just like being very uh, improvisational about it. I was posting them online, hoping for some reaction and nobody was reading it. And I could find like no community <laughs> to appreciate Aww. any of this stuff. I felt like I was like working in a void and just like sharing it for myself. And, and it was a little bit depressing in that way. Uh, and so I kind of stopped doing it after like, I think I did like nine or 10 comics and I just stopped. But, but the initial reason I was doing it, I think was pretty pure. I was just trying to do something just to get my creativity going. So that's where it came from. I have another question for you, Daniel. Would you have wanted to make your show more mature? And if yes, in what aspects? Hmm. I guess what's interesting about that is the comic was more mature. I, I don't want to say mature. It's like, I'm, I'm just, I'm, my work is not edgy or anything, you know, but like, I guess the comic had like, had like the first comic we ever did for bears, like we killed it. We killed a little girl. And then, like, in, in in other, like, comics, like, you know, they'd get drunk or, you know, they'd, they'd be hungover and stuff like that. So I guess you could say, like, the origins were a little edg edgier, <laughs> if you want to call that edgy. <laughs> Daniel, but, but your I, your life is just PG-13. I know. I just like to roll. <laughs> <laughs> I like to roll with just three cuss words. That's all. Um, but like, uh, yeah, when we went to the comic I, or the actual show, I don't know. Overall, I don't. I didn't feel that censored. I mean, obviously, we got S and P notes and legal notes and stuff like that. But I think my general taste is bears when it comes down to it. You know, I, I think generally it's in the vicinity. So I was working in a pretty comfortable space. So. Yeah, I don't really have an interest to do anything that's much more like subversive. It, it doesn't really interest me or nor is it my taste. So mm. if that answers the question. Yeah, I think it does. Okay. Okay. Next question is for Domi. The question is, will we see another bow short soon? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> So you feel like you wrapped up your story nicely and it's done. Well, 
No, I think I still have a lot to unpack in that uh, parent-child relationship. Uh, and that's why I'm working on a feature, because because there's just just a lot of stuff, <laughs> a lot of juicy, juicy f familial drama and and emotions and and themes that I want to explore that cannot be contained in a in a short. So, so that's why I'm directing a feature. Okay, next question is also for Domi. Bao is a cute story of a woman who dreams of losing her only son. What made you create this cute yet deep story? Also, when I watched it, I figured that the main, I figured that the mom might have separation anxiety, which is why she tries to keep her son from danger. Is that correct? Also, can you teach us how to draw a little son from Bao when he was a dumpling? <laughs> cool. Uh, yeah, so Bao came from uh, it's my own relationship with my mom, uh, who's super, was super overprotective of me growing up because I was an only, chi I'm an only child, and I just remember, you know, even as I grew, as I grew up, she'd she'd like hug me, real close and be like, oh Domi, I wish I could put you back in my stomach so I knew exactly where you were at all times, and I'd be like, oh ma. <laughs> so sweet but creepy <laughs> no stop but then that was kind of the inspiration for this story about a mom that eventually does try to put her little baby back you know in into her stomach so he wouldn't leave her i also wanted to learn more about why my mom felt this way and to put myself in a another person's like point of view um and uh i also just like food a lot and I really wanted to make something that featured that heavily featured food and food porn, and um, I love <laughs> you know all of Miyazaki's films because he just spends so much meticulous time like showing the preparation and consumption of food, and I and I really wanted to do that with uh, with Bao. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much how the idea came about. And what was the sorry? What was the second part of the question? They were asking if the mom had separation anxiety. Oh yes, she did. Um, you know, in the story, you see that her dumplings growing up, he's uh, starting to like make new friends, have other interests besides just hanging out with his mom, and then he eventually gets a girlfriend and wants to move out, and uh, she can't handle that. So then she does the the only thing that she can think of, which is to, you know, to to, to keep him forever, which is to to eat him. Uh, so yes, you are you are correct. She did have separation anxiety. I think we all do at some point in like any relationship. It's like an important kind of lesson that you got to learn. If you love something, you got to let it go. You know, give it some space. <laughs> all that stuff. <laughs> And the last part was uh, asking if you can teach us how to draw the little son when he's about. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, so I always start with like a circle that's like kind of ovally, like an oval from the side. And then I do like a three pronged nipple at the top. <laughs> and, then, and then you add like three lines just to show like the the tension of the of the bow wrapper and then uh bow has like he's a kind of a chill guy so we kind of gave him like zen um line eyes and then he kind of has like a a little uh little garlic nose and then a, a little mouth and then uh, he's got a little body. His body's really little. Um, like that. And that's how you draw baby bow. And then, you know, he goes through transformation uh, in the short. So he gets glasses. Like he, he starts to grow up, so we give him glasses. Um, and then eventually he gets a little shirt. A little shirt. And then, you know, uh, by the end of uh, his journey, he's he's got a little goatee. So we gave him a little <laughs> sesame seed goatee. 
um, <laughs> in the shore. And then we I don't gave think I caught little... that. That was ses- those were sesame seeds. Yeah, it was sesame seeds. Oh my god, that's, really funny. that's hilarious. So and, then we, and then we gave oh. him a little a little blazer. <laughs> oh, that's adorable. <laughs> like a little jacket and like a black shirt. <laughs> um, so that's Bao as an adult uh, when he's trying to move out with his girlfriend. So this is kind of what he looks like. His his like fully formed self. And he's then a man. The, yeah, he's 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 a little he's a little man now. <laughs> yeah. We had to like give him distinguishing features so that when you see him as a human, you can still tell that it's the same dude. Mm-hmm. So you know, mm-hmm. the goatee, the glasses, and we even gave his human form the the jacket with the black shirt. Yeah, when did you come up? Foul. When did you come up for the uh, with the idea that uh, the mom would eat the bow? Was that like something early on, or was that something you discovered as you were writing it? Oh, it was early on. Um, it was like yeah, from, from the very beginning, I really wanted her to eat him because it just felt like the natural uh, journey that the yeah. <laughs> the mom character would go on, and I just right. really wanted to explore this idea of like yeah, like a a mom who wouldn't let go right, yeah. <laughs> of her right. dumpling. Um, I, I think, you know, like like reading fairy tales like uh, The Little Gingerbread Man, right. I always was like, like, why didn't the mom or the parent or the thing, the lady that made it, like, she she could, she could she should have just eaten him at the end to prevent him from <laughs> leaving her. Broke his little legs so he wouldn't escape. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> um... So, yeah. yeah, it's 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 always been a movie, or in 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 the short. Yeah, right. Was... Cool. I have uh, some more questions, and these are for everybody. Mm. I'm a young drawer who dreams about working in animation. Do you have any tips on how to enter this market? Any tips for finding your own art style? Draw a it's lot, true. and uh, there's really no way around that. It's not just the things that you love, but you know, there's other there's all kinds of different styles. You could just experiment with and don't be afraid of copying either i think that that's one thing that i've noticed a lot of young people being a little bit wary of but i mean that's all i did when i was a kid was just, i just copied everything around me and that's kind of one way how your style starts to formulate is just building up all these like this knowledge as you're copying so i don't know that for me is one way that helped me a lot to define um you know how i draw and what i like I'm the same way, yeah. I'm, I, I'm, I'm with you, Daniel. Draw a lot. I drew so much fan art <laughs> growing mm-hmm. up. I think that's how I got passionate about drawing as a profession, was just draw a lot, draw different things, find other people that want to draw and and, 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 and animate and, and, and are passionate about the same thing that you are too. In high school, I was vice president of the anime club, <laughs> so I, I felt like I had my little, my nerdy little group that we all encouraged each other and we showed each other comics and and stuff. And then in college, uh, I went to animation school, but you know, I formed this really close group of friends, and we would all just like, it's like we'd all motivate each other and push each other and like trade sketchbooks and sketches and. Um, just finding that community, I think, would really help you uh, grow. So, what do you think a um, healthy community should look like if you're if you're looking for a community to work with uh, and help you uh, grow your skills and motivate yourself? You know, a lot of us will make horrible things and not like always have polished stuff, and I think. Mm-hmm. When I knew, like, I knew I found like certain people I could trust when when they would give me notes, and I wouldn't like want to fight that, or I would know they weren't like like judging that I was not good enough. Like, I, I could just trust that they they would be honest with me, and but they also knew that I was capable of making it better. So that probably is the thing you want to look for is people that you can just trust to not judge you. Hmm. Yeah, and that's different than like an audience. A community is different than an audience. I think. Yeah, right. right? Yeah. Like totally. I feel like like you don't like I feel like if you listen too much to like your audience, then you can it's like it's too it gets too crazy. It like well, like that like focus group feedback that like yeah. <laughs> uh I feel like you, you can fall under that that trap of just like, oh my god, like 
this doesn't have as many likes or not a lot of people are looking at this. That's not a community. A community is like, it can be a small or a big group, but it's just people that you trust, like you said, um, mm -hmm. who can give you constructive feedback, but who understand the goal that you want to um, work towards in your art. And they're not just, you know, anonymous people critiquing you and stuff. Um, yeah. You trust them. They're your peers. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's a big yeah. thing, I think, that you said, too. It's like people who know what you're going for. Like, that—that yeah. that is such a huge thing because, you know, I think even when you're in school, like, you could ask, like, five, you know, very, like, successful teachers that work in the industry, like, for advice or, like, for notes on your work. And they'll all probably give you different notes. Mm -hmm. and And it's like, how do you know which is right and which is wrong? A lot of it just has to do with the people that you know understand what your taste is and what you're trying to achieve and uh -huh. they will help give you the feedback based on knowing you in that way and that is so important to know and to identify because otherwise you can get so many random opinions that will just draw you in the wrong ways and uh and so i think what domi saying is is so crucial and, and that's why this this small community that you can find who understands and knows like what what you're about and what you're trying to do is so important yeah, mm -hmm. it's like uh, there's like two types of notes, like the, the the notes that are actually helpful and trying to help you achieve your goal. And then the other notes are just like what the person wishes your thing was. <laughs> yeah, through their lens. <laughs> like it's, or not even, it's, like, it's like, where's yeah. the where's the, where are the guns? Where's the, where, <laughs> where, the, where are the tits? You know, and you're like, oh, that's not a, that's not a constructive. <laughs> yeah. no. Or like, I wish this was a, a bear, not a bow or whatever. And you're like. Well, sorry. <laughs> um, I know the three of you are in leadership positions, working on shows and directing, creating things. Um, what do you think uh, makes up giving good feedback? I think when I give notes, I try to contextualize why certain things don't work uh, and not just say like, that's like, that's dumb. You know, I think like things that uh, are just dismissive, I, you know, are just not helpful, you know, and also for a young artist, it, it doesn't teach them like anything, you know, it, or it, maybe it does, but it, it's, it, it just, it ends a conversation very quickly. Like it doesn't educate or inspire or anything like that. So if there's like, if there's a gag that doesn't work, a lot of it's like, well, how could we, let's see, it's about, it's also about me as a leader, just throwing out ideas. like. What if this happened? Or what if what if it was more like this? Or what if we did it this way? Just trying to get their brain thinking so I'm not just creating dead ends for them. Uh, but then the other angle is also like, are we servicing the story? So, you know, if there's a beat that doesn't quite work, making sure that they understand like, what are we servicing? What is the bigger picture here? And making sure they understand context. Um, honestly, a lot of being a leader uh, for, uh, anything is really just being very clear and having uh, a, a good vision that people can understand and um, relate to. And uh, a lot of times you don't get that, I think. But when when the artist has that, I think it really makes a big difference uh, to getting what you need um, out of an artist. Uh, Domi, what do, you, what do you think? Yes, I think everything that Daniel said totally rings true. Um, and then, yeah, like for me, just going in, like maybe like having like a 85 percent uh clarity of what i want with like leaving room leaving that 15 percent for like the other person to contribute the best way to motivate a person is to is to like make them feel involved and like contribute creatively to the to the project so i think it's just being loose with uh and open to to what what you're what your goal is when you're working with someone. And then <laughs> the sandwich approach, I think always helps. It's like, yes. start, start with your critique. Or no, no, start with something nice, mm -hmm. like, a, like, like a positive, and then get into the meat of it, like the critique, and then end on a positive too. Yeah. And I think yeah. that really helps as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a, there's a thing I think that, uh, especially at Pixar, I think that everyone struggled with where I think people would just jump to criticism very quickly and you know although criticism can help a lot you also want to make sure you acknowledge what's good yeah. you know and what's yeah. working usually people just 
skip over the stuff that they like and they don't even like mention it and they just jump straight to like what they think can be improved on but you have no idea like if there was stuff in there that was that like is good or is it is working uh and, and then i feel like that if people don't ask that then a lot of the times i see artists and directors just throwing the baby out with the bath water like getting rid of everything and starting from scratch and i'm like but no but there was some good stuff in there but they didn't know that so i, th I think you yeah. just have to ask for that stuff too i have a few more fan questions what are some of the best tips for writing that you have to offer you guys can answer i'm not very good at writing <laughs> <laughs> i mean um uh, well natasha do you want to go uh yeah i I guess uh, I like to write around moments. I know that that's not really kind of encouraged too much in television, but I like to think of very specific kind of scenes that I would like to hit, and then I'll build a story around it. It kind of makes it feel a little bit discombobulated and dreamy, but I like that effect personally. Yeah, how do you do it, Daniel? Well, our the way that I I grew up with comics, like comic strips, like that was the the thing that I I like Garfield and Calvin Hobbes. Those are things I copied, and I think what was great about that is it also taught me how to write because I was always making comics as a kid, so I never had a fear of writing because I was always drawing like word bubbles and stuff like that, and pretty much like. I've carried that into how we made bears. And essentially what that means is like when we were in the story room breaking stories, everyone in the room would draw at the same time and come up with funny drawings or funny little things that that drawing was saying. And we would basically create like gags through this story process of like just people doodling in the room and then making each other laugh with drawings and, and funny like little quips that people would say or not quips but like little words that we'd be able to say and so every time every time i work it's basically like that it's like coming up with uh um just really visual the visual comedy with the writing at the same time i think that has been like a very useful thing on bears and also in my new project the other thing that has been really helpful is this idea of what the second act is supposed to have, which is like my favorite like uh, part in the beginning to deal with. It's one of the hardest, but like- I hate the second act. <laughs> it's, it's really hard, but, is. but the beginning of act two is always really fun for me, especially on bears. And the reason for that is because you know that what act two, the beginning of act two has to have is the most, it's all the things that you promised in the, in the premise of your episode or your movie has to happen in the, in the beginning of act two because you're selling basically the fun the the word that it's used in this like very cliche book called save the cat which i i know people like make fun of a lot but I, it's a good book but he calls it the fun and games and i remember every time we were in the story room when we were trying to break act two i was always just like this is the fun and games of the episode what are the <laughs> things that that the audience is asked wants to see what are the things we're promising them in this moment to sell so if it's a moment of the bears have, um, you know, or Grizz like wants to hibernate, uh, you know, and then we know that act two is gonna be all the fun and games of seeing Grizz trying to hibernate. Mm -hmm. And like, that is that is like the fun of your episode. Um, so that has one, been one thing that's helped me a lot in terms of structure, knowing that act two will always have to be the fulfillment of your premise. Mm. All right. Well, I think that's the last question I have. I think we need to wrap up. Um, mm. Thanks, everyone, for coming and drawing and answering all these questions. Do you have anything else you want to add or say to fans of the shows that you make before we go? I want to say uh, don't do crypto art until they figure out how to deal with all that energy that they're spending i just found out about it like three days ago and i'm really messed up i don't like how it works i don't like the blockchain i'm really mad i don't know what it is <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> oh my god explain, explain what? this <laughs> what's going on <laughs> so from what i understand crypto art is something that some people that do something called blockchain put together and it's a way of like selling your art on a marketplace which is awesome but in order mm -hmm. to verify the art in this database that they 
It's almost like people want to prove that they own a GIF or like a, a clip of a movie. Um, mm. But in order to verify it, and every time it sells and it's uploaded, they just blast through like, I, I think an hour of energy that you would be on a flight, like an hour on a flight, that amount of energy just oh. posting it. If someone buys it, that happens. And like, there's one, I think the most expensive crypto art piece or the most traded has eaten up 77 years of power that someone in a house would use oh up. Oh my God. So it's, under- it's kind of like, so it's kind of like cryptocurrency in the sense that yeah. it drains a lot of power. Yes. It's mm-hmm. it's the same thing, but it's just like now they've done it with like GIFs and and JPEGs and 3D modeling stuff, and it's what? just driving me crazy. That's I crazy. I don't. I only mm. just learned about it, but it was enough to make me just like uh, <laughs> get really upset. <laughs> so uh, you don't have to watch my show, but I would really appreciate it if you did not do any crypto art until they fix that problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Stop the crypto art. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I can be. I'm anti that. Yeah, don't do nice. that. <laughs> Thanks for teaching us that. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you have anything, Domi? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Thanks for listening, everybody, and watching. You're uh, not going to tell us about all all the secret stuff you're making. <laughs> I wish. New movie called Turning Red. It's coming out in 2022. Uh, it's about a girl that can poof into a giant red panda. It's going to be really cute and fun. Um, and uh, look out for it. And then, yeah, for all the aspiring artists, animators, just keep drawing. Keep finding your communities and uh, keep sharing and, and, and yeah, just and, and, and like power through the artist block. Just grit yeah. your teeth until you taste blood. As Miyazaki would say. <laughs> oh. I'm like, I don't know if that's healthy, Miyazaki. <laughs> but, um, yeah. 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 Well, awesome. Uh, Thanks. So, oh, do you have anything, Daniel? Oh, um, no. Thanks for watching. I mean, I think after all this talk, I think the one thing I'm remembering is, especially when I'm thinking about, like, the young artists watching, I do miss... <laughs> the you know the being young but also like having the energy to want to make my own stuff all the time and just experiment and play i think you it's you kind of lose some of that joy <laughs> a little bit as you get older mm-hmm. and i would just say that like if you guys are young and young drawers or people who like to make things really take advantage of this energy and time that you have to make things because uh, you know it, it only kind of gets a little bit like less inspiring as you get older, or harder to be inspired. I suppose mm-hmm. maybe a better way to say it. So mm-hmm. this is the great time to just make stuff and to like put things out there and to really just love making things for the sake of making things. And um, and so take advantage of that moment because mm-hmm. it is fleeting and it gets harder as you get older. So. This is the old man advice coming to you from Aww. Discord. <laughs> old, man Dan- old man Daniel and his little nuggets of wisdom. Yeah. <laughs> so keep drawing. Yeah. Stay young as long as you can. Don't and, grow uh, old. <laughs> and find a cool community that can support you and give you uh, positive feedback to motivate mm-hmm. you, basically. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Well, you thank you so much for doing this. This has been so much fun. I feel like I learned a lot. Uh, yeah, me too. And me too. I guess that's it. See you later. Cool. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye guys. Bye.